OK, uh, so now let's talk about a very important skill that in develop, developing functions in Python and also actually in <coughs> many uh, programming languages. So that is called incremental development. OK, so that means that so when you are trying to resolve a problem or defining a function, so do not want to write a function at one time. So that is almost impossible. So we normally start working program and also make small incremental changes. <clears throat> and also we always use variables to hold intermediate uh, values so that you can display and also check them. So that is very important that when you're defining functions. Although in this class and also in our program, so um, you are not expected to be able to write um, very complicated functions because we are not in uh, computer science. But if you can write some very simple functions, so that can help you and uh, that can save you a lot of time. Uh, in the data analytics. Uh, so, <clears throat> so for example, if you want to define a function, let's say, um, um, calculate, uh, let's say, slope of two point of the of the line of the line. Okay. So, if you want to do that, so you may want to write okay in the first version. Okay. Uh, in a function, you will take all those arguments, so like the point of a and also point of B and you print out okay you print out so if whether or not you can you have those uh, X and Y and coordinates of A and B has been uh, correctly received in the version 2 you may want to calculate let's say um, uh, <coughs> uh, the distance all the angles, so like say from proper distance and all the angles, okay, based on those coordinates, and you can print out those output and check whether or not they are, they work out. And in the version three, you may just calculate the slope, okay. So based on you know the distance and also those angles, and you print out the result and see whether or not they work. In version four, so you may want to bring different um, um, number. Like in this case, you may. So if you use point A and B to develop your uh, functions, you may want point C and D to double check your functions. Okay, see whether or not they are working. Okay, so again, so the idea is that you don't write functions at once. Okay, so that is almost impossible in most scenarios um, you just you you may want to develop one by one so each single time you just revolve resolve a uh, small problems so remember that we mentioned earlier that when you have a big problems you want to put that one into multiple steps okay step a step b and also step c and you tell the computer to finish those steps to resolve your big problem Okay, so that is exactly the idea that behind this incremental development. <clears throat> All right. Um, another uh, function or another technique or skill that in the function development is called recursive functions. And actually, personally, I do not recommend using this one. So because it is not explicit. So you might feel that, OK, so this is an elegant way to defining functions. However, so this might be harder for other programmers to understand your functions. And also, especially now we are deploying those uh, functions in the cloud. OK, so when you are using cloud resources, so the recursive functions may not be friendly for the cloud resources. But it is still a very important concept. So recursive function means that the definition contains a reference to the thing that being defined. OK, so the functions can call it self. And that is called recursive functions. 
All right, so let's see some examples. So here, let's say we want to calculate the factorial. Okay, so this is a great example that we can use in recursive functions because factorial equals m times m minus 1 times m minus 2 until m until reach 1. So that actually equals m times the factorial of m minus 1. Okay, and factorial of m minus 1 actually equals m minus 1 times the factorial of m minus 2. Okay, so this is a great example that we can use this uh, factorial, oh sorry, this uh, recursive function. Okay, so let's see that in Python. So, So let's say define calculate factorial, which we which which we just need a one uh, parameter that is m, and then let's say if m equals zero, we are written one, okay? Because the factorial of the zero is always one. Else we will return m times calculate factorial m minus 1. Okay, so that is a recursive function. And you can you can say, okay, so it is very beautiful, it is very elegant. However, so for beginners, it's, it's a little bit hard to understand. So let's try that. So calculate factorial, so if we try 0, Okay, and we have one, which is which is nice. And if we try three, okay, we have six, and which is also nice. And let's see if we try five. Okay, we have one hundred and twenty. Okay, so that is an example of the using the recursive function. Um, personally, I don't like it, but just letting know that we we can do the recursive functions in Python and also I believe in other um, programming languages. Okay, so here let's see we see another example that define a function to calculate the, the permutation. Uh, so permutation is the factorial of m divided by factorial of m minus n. Okay, so here we see that we uh, to define that function we we already have the function to calculate factorial of m. So if we want to define the p, what we can do is that we can use in within this p function, the result equals the f of m divided by f of m minus n. Okay, so this is kind of the incremental development because we are we have resolved this quest problem and also this problem. So now we can use that solution. We can combine that solution to resolve a new problem. That is, we are using a factorial, the functional factorial to calculate the function of the permutation. OK, so let's do that. So let's say define calculate permutation. In this case, we have two input, m and also n. And this function is pretty simple. We just return the factori factorial uh, of n divided by the factorial of m minus n. OK, so that's very simple. Now let's try it. So let's say calculate uh, 5 and 3. Okay, let's see how that work. And you can see it worked. And if we change that one, let's see, with different number six and four. Okay, and right. <clears throat> okay, and we have this result. Okay, uh, so that's for today's lab. So now let's upload the Python code to GitHub. So let's see, git add dash dash all. 
gate commit dash m uh, and this is lecture eight commit gate push okay uh, so now, because we define functions in our Python code, so I just want to show you that on GitHub. So how we are the how will that look like on GitHub? So that is uh, lab eight. <coughs> so now you can see before because we define those functions, so our code are more complicated, and also a nice stuff in on GitHub is that they are able to help you to find out those functions that you define. Okay, so which is pretty cool.